And a 19 champion. Could it be one of the two players we have here, Blocky or Young Kim? RG, I think most people would consider this a game that uh, features two of the favorites. Uh, you want to talk about two of the favorites? How about in this same exact tournament last year, the Madden Ball? This is actually a rematch of the semifinals. These guys played in the semifinal game last year, and Blocky lost in devastating fashion to Kiv. It was a blowout win for Kiv, 24 0. And you know, Blocky's had a long time to think about that. Kiv ended up going on to win that belt. So here's a little revenge game for young Blocky. And while these guys get set up, get their audible set. RG, remind the people at home, those Madden heads, what playbooks these two are using. Let me pull those up for you real quick. By the way, I got a fun fact for you. Uh, the most used player in uh, in this tournament, 16 players, salary cap, most used player, Dan Bailey. That's the budget kicker. Wham, bam, thank you, Dan. And really, 15 out of the 16 players used him. The only guy that didn't use budget Dan was Strafen, and unfortunately for Strafen, he's out the tournament. Uh, real quick, I'll give you the playbooks, Nick. Um, you got Blocky, New England Patriots offensive playbook, and he's got the New York Giants defensive playbook, probably by and far the most defensive playbook we saw. Young Kiv's going to be running the Tampa Bay Bucks offensive playbook, Evil. and surprise, surprise, he's Evil. also in the New York Giants defensive playbook. It's about the only no, happiness no, no. the New York Giants have. We've no. seen their playbook used a whole lot. It's Mike Vick, first in 10, down the middle of the field. Kiv starting off strong, and... Uh, Kiv known for that passing attack, and we're seeing it on display with this first play of the game. And look at that, Coach Kiv on the sideline and Coach Blocky on the sideline. That shows you how elite these guys are. These are two players where you can actually go and get their coaches in Ultimate Team and put them on your sideline. I mean, that's got to be surreal for these guys. I'm not even, I, I, that would be a dream come true, Nick. Yeah, put me in, Coach. I'm there. Actually, just put me as one of like the, the concession vendors in the stands. I'll, I'll, I'll yell popcorn as I walk down. I think that'd be a, a good roll. First attempt for Kip. And I'll tell you what, Kip needs to open up this game strong on offense. He spent almost all of his salary cap on the offensive side of the ball there. And as you see right there, there's a look at Kiv's offense. You see under right, 400 cap on defense. under 400 cap on defense. I want you guys to pay attention right there where he spent 633 base cap on offense and only 395 cap on defense. And plus he spent a whole bunch of other cap on offensive abilities. So this is a guy in young Kiv that is blatantly all in on the offensive side of the ball. Right up the middle of the former Texas Longhorn, the former Miami Dolphin legend, Ricky Williams, killed one of only two players to have Ricky Williams as a starting halfback. We saw Crush using them yesterday. Now first and ten for Kip Vick. Left side, Ricky Williams once again. Bringing up a couple, and so far it's surgical for young Kip. I mean, uh, Kip's going to have more dots than there are GGs in the chat, Nick. I mean, this is a young man who people, not, they call him a robot. When you talk to the other competitors, they say Kiv is a robot. He doesn't miss any reads. He always makes the right read. He makes very few mistakes. And uh, it, right now, it's just looking like business as usual for him on this opening drive. Look at that. They throw outside, Ricky Lynn spins back inside. First down to the 13-yard line. And guys, keep it locked on the at Madden League Ops Twitter handle for live tournament coverage, content, news updates, and more. Red zone opportunity for young Kip. And out that gun bunch. Three to the right side. Moss alone on the left side. Vic. It's that wheel, wheel route. route. Got him. Money ball. Put it where your receiver can get it. That's a pretty good receiver over there in Jerry Rice. So if you haven't caught on yet, one of the number one scoring plays these guys have is you go to the gun punch formation, you call the verticals play. You put your best receiver on the outside, on the trip side, and you motion them out. That puts them on that wheel route up the sideline. You wait, you motion them out, wait for them to cut up that sideline, throw them a high pass, and he's just going to go and jump up and get it in those one-on-one -on -one situations. But the key is making sure you put your best wide receiver, or one of your best wide receivers, in that position. As you see Jerry Rice, just go up there, grab it, one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to come down with that more often than not. And make sure you throw that high ball when you throw that, Nick. To throw the high ball, you simply hold the LB button. When you press the receiver's icon down, gives you a little extra arc, lets him jump up and go get it. And worst case scenario, a lot of the times, it's just an inaccurate pass that goes in the back of the end zone. Kind of gives you a my guy or no guy type of throw.
The delay of game decline. Gentlemen's agreement, if you haven't joined us before, as these players get their audible set. Their substitution set, but an early lead. Kim drove down the field in under two minutes' time, put seven on the board, and now it's time for Blocky to respond. Yeah, and don't and think Blocky going. might not respond. We, we talked a lot about Kim's offense. Blocky also known as having a great offense, a great gun bunch. They run similar styles. Let's see if Blocky can execute. That's Leonard Fournette, Jacksonville Jaguar, uh, taking the kick. And I will say, Nick, it's important for Blocky to respond. Remember, Kim has nobody, nobody on that defensive side of the ball. So you can't let him get stops early or else he's going to be way too comfortable. This is actually a very big drive for Blocky to set the tone in this game. When he says nobody, I think RG and I are out there playing defense for Kim. That's how little cap he is on. I'm too good to be on good defense. <laughs> That's how the feed it is. Second and nine, quick throw underneath, spins back inside. That's Kenny G, Kenny Galladay. Up to the 35-yard line, picking up the first down. Yeah, and Blocky is like Skimbo. He runs this uh, 11 personnel. That's uh, three wide receivers, one halfback, one tight end. And his three wide receivers are Kenny Galladay, Julio Jones, and Randy Moss. Those are all guys that are six foot three, six foot four, with a lot of speed, a lot of athleticism. And that's just a lot for the defense to deal with, especially when it's depleted like young kids. Now the first down run for Blocky, trying to get that run game going with Leonard Fournette. Trying to tackle a Mack truck out there. Bowling ball. Through the middle of that line. Back in the gun bunch for Blocky. Two to the right, one to the left. Vic at the helm. Both these players going with the lefty former Falcon, Mike Vic, at the quarterback position. Rolls left. Look at downfield. What a great user downfield. That's Runs backwards. User. He'll just have to throw it out of bounds. That's great user, and that's good defense by Kibb. That was a man-to-man -man zone coverage hybrid. He had flat zones on the outside, two deep zones over top, but then he had some of his underneath linebackers who he sub safeties in at that position, manned them up on Julio, had some man coverage on the other side. That's a good That's a good crossbreed, a man and zone coverage right there from young Kibb. Third and nine. Blocky looking for a conversion. We're going to answer the early touchdown from our defending Madden Bowl champ, Young Kibb, here in Group C. A lot of time when these guys run that man zone hybrid, they're going to leave you that seam route open over the middle. Let's see if Blocky finds that at some point. We found a, a seam just on the other side, and that was to the current Atlanta Falcon, Julio Jones. I'm telling you, Nick, uh, Randy Moss, Julio Jones. And a geeked out Kenny Galladay. It's not just any Galladay. It's like a 97, 98 overall item uh, that has all the ratings you need to be effective. And off up the middle. That's Leonard Fournette once again. Nowhere to go. Blocking the only person here at the Madden Bowl using Fournette as a starting halfback. That's interesting. And you'll see a little mix of halfback from these guys, especially uh, from these passers. They, they don't really invest a whole lot in their halfback. We saw a lot of Joe Mixon's. Maybe a little bit of four nets, but a lot of these guys just go with budget halfbacks that they're not going to give them a ton of carries, but they'll be able to break maybe a tackle or two at some point in the game. Second down at eight, Vic. Pressure. Down goes Vic right up the eight gap. It was Wilson creating a big defensive play. That's a big, that's a big sack right there for Young Kiv. Gets Blocky into a third and 19. How will Blocky be able to respond to this? Uh, right up the gap. Oh, no that blocker. guard just completely dumbed out. Third and long for Blocky. As we're nearing the end of the first quarter, 7-0, Kim on top. Oh, look at that scissors contest. This is going to be tough. Oh, and he oh. got a false start. So if it wasn't hard enough, now it's a third and 24. And it's impressive Kim wasn't on the aggressive pass rush. If there's a time to tell your lineman to go into a jet technique, a jet tech means, means don't worry about the run, just get your butts after the quarterback, and you can do that by setting your pass rush to aggressive at the play call screen. Uh, now's the time to do that if you're a young kid. And there they come. And he's looking left side, corner out, can he get it there? Oh. No, what a swat. Little uh, bracket coverage on the left side, and now it looks like Blocky may have to pump this ball away at fourth and 24. Nope. It's, hey, it's the Madden Bowl. Uh, I don't like this. 
I, I don't like this, Nick. I, I, I know Kiv is soft on defense, but if you don't convert here, Kiv's pretty much in field goal range, can make it two possessions. But Blocky just knows that him being able to stop Kiv's offense is unlikely, so he probably feels forced to have to go for this right here. Fourth and what it seems like forever. Out of the go. He's going to try. He's passed a lot of scrimmage oh, anyway. So a disastrous drive for Blocky. It started out promising, ends up giving great field position to young Kiv. And you know what? Once this first quarter ends, now Kiv is going to have held Blocky scoreless in their mediums five quarters straight. Because remember, dating back to the semifinals of last year's Madden Ball, he shut him out 24 nothing. So this is about to be five straight quarters where Blocky hasn't been able to put up points on young Kiv. And Mike Vick slides down, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. 7-0. Kiv on top with the ball in business and in control our defending club uh, bowl champion. Well, going to win his second Madden Bowl belt. Hey, guys, throughout the tournament, we're going ham on Twitch drops. We're giving away four gold or better players, a 200-pick currency quick sell, a competitive series trophy, and the 98 overall Madden 20 cover player, Patrick Mahomes. Click the link below to connect your Madden and Twitch accounts to earn. The longer you watch, the more rewards you earn. So we head to the second quarter. Big congrats to Patty Mahomes getting that Madden 20 cover. Speaking of big congrats, Nick, uh, both of these players, we see Mike first, Vic versus Mike Vic. We actually have a colleague at EA who's a big Falcons fan. And big shout out to our guy Ben Frey and his wife as they just had their new baby boy Beckett. Ben's going to be with us here because he's taking care of business with the family. But shout out to you guys. We love you. Big congrats to Ben and his wife welcoming a new baby boy to the world. Doug Beckett, that's a Beckett Frey. That's a good name. I can picture it's Josh Beckett. I, I, I think of Beckett Magazine. Remember when you, that's how you had it before the internet. That's how you yeah. had to look up the price of your sports cards. That's how old school I am. There are a bunch of uh, of people in the chat going before the internet. What? When? What? For real, back in the day. I don't want to interfere on the scoring drive, but if you had sports cards and you were a card collector and you wanted to look up how much one of your cards was worth, you had to go and buy this Beckett magazine and it had all the different cards, how much they were worth, and that was the only way to get that information. Second and three. Young Kib in business at the 11-yard line. Looking to go up two scores on Blocky here in the first game. Day two of the Madden Bowl. Nick Mazesco, RG, hanging out with you. Appreciate all you guys in the Twitch chat. It's so great. That Twitch chat's been rolling. It was rolling yesterday, and I'm sure it's rolling right now. A lot of GGs in that chat, man. I have fun with it, though. You know, I, I love to go back, watch these broadcasts, see some of the comments in the chat. Some of the guys dig into us. Some of them show us a lot of love. We always obviously appreciate those guys, but it's awesome to see these guys support the players more than anything. Yeah. Them saying, oh, I'm excited to watch Young Cub. I'm excited to see Skimbo. Uh, that's the type of stuff that's going to grow this community, and that's the stuff that I like to see. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Third and three. Young Kip trying to get Ricky Williams mm. going. That stingy, blocky defense holds him to a field goal attempt. That's, that's big for blocky. That's, that, that, that's big for blocky. He figured that he was probably at the least going to let up three if he didn't get that fourth down to be able to get a little bit stingy, hold Kip to that three. Blocky will get the ball to start the second half, so. But all he does now is put so much more pressure on himself to get the ball on this drive and get some points. Remember, he's on a five-quarter streak where he hasn't been able to score points against Young Kim. He needs to get over that hump. It's Blocky's offense. We'll start from the 22-yard line. Saw a little bit of success on that first drive. He hit a nice seam route to Julio Jones, but it was the sack and then the, the penalty that Set him behind the clock, and now we're first and ten. Leonard Ford, big goes. hole, Ray right blocking up the front. And you see those helmets up there. You got to remember, Kip from Seattle, Blocky from Miami, Young Kip, the defending Seattle Seahawks club champion, Blocky, the two-time defending Miami Dolphins club champion. Both these guys representing their favorite NFL teams, representing for their cities. Little Miami versus Seattle action going on. 10 nothing. Block. Yeah, why not give it back to the bowling ball, Leonard Fournette, up to the 42-yard line. Take a look at this. 
This is some footage from last time these two met up, and RG, it was an absolute shellacking by Young Kiv. Yep, and Young Kiv came to this game fully prepared, and you know what? After this win, he, he went on to beat Trini and win his first ever belt. He's the defended Madden Ball champion. Put an end to block, he sees him in the process. Second out of three. Vic. Nice right up the play. scene. Nice Close again. Play. Julio Jones. And if that's there all day, look out, because Blocky could be in for a comeback. That was a great way to stress that cloud flat on the outside. You got the running back on the wheel with a corner route behind him. That cloud flat needs to make a decision to look like he was playing the flat route. Let's the corner route sneak out right up to behind him. Blocky makes the right read. That was a great route combination. That's a way to stress the cornerback trying to do a little too much out there on the outside in that cloud flat. As we talk a lot about one of the biggest difference between real NFL football and Madden football is how quickly the clock goes. We're already at the two minute warning in the second quarter for Nett, another big game. And you see that Terrell Edmonds, that's one of Kiv's best defenders. I mean, he's not great, and he's still not able to make the tackle on Fournette. Quick, quick. It's amazing that kid was even able to get a stop with this defense. If you gave me this defensive personnel, Nick, and told me to get out there on the sticks, oh my gosh, I wouldn't know what to do. Taking out a three for blocking. Rolling left. Playmaker up the field, oh, but he overthrew it. And Antoine Bethay with the pick, just as we talk about how little cap Kim spent. That's a pick any cap can make. Well, that's not Kim making a play. That's Blocky's offense messing up, rolling on the pocket, trying to throw a play as it breaks down, gets an inaccurate pass that goes right over the open receiver's head and Kiv gets an interception. So one thing you definitely can't do against this defense is allow your team to beat themselves. And that's what happened right there for Kablocki. That is devastating. And Blocky still unable to score points against young Kiv. He's gotta be in his head by now. It's a, it's a mental pretzel as Falls would say. Now a second and one. Kiv with the ball with a 10 point lead. Three timeouts. Got everything working in his favor right now. Vic, left side. Throws oh it back right, has gosh. it back. That's Randy Moss. He came all the way across the field, and who else but Randy? Kiv, eight of eight passing to start this game. I told you he had more dots than there were GGs in the chat. I mean, he is just moving. Remember, though, if you're blocky, you get the ball to start the second half. It's very important that you just don't let Kiv score a touchdown right here. As long as you can keep a two-possession ball game, you still got a chance. But if you let Kiv just drive down the field like he still would get a touchdown, make the three possessions, it's going to be almost impossible for you to be able to come back from that. Nine for nine, 134 yards passing the ball. More importantly, he's up 10-0 on the scoreboard. First game of Group C action. We got seven hours of action-packed Madden football. So happy to have you along with us. First and 10 for Kim. Look at corner out left side, looking for Ocho Cinco. Oh. Almost picked off, but he didn't get the he two. Got he, he got, got the two feet in bounds. for Blocky. Deion Sanders with what might have been a game-saving play for Blocky. Oh, that is huge for Blockson. Let's see what he can do. He has 39 seconds to work. All three timeouts. Let's see if you can finally erase this donut, Blocky. You got yourself some momentum. He's got, ooh. Just the wheel with Fournette. I I'm telling you, the way Kim's playing this defense, it looks like when he sends that slot receiver out the bunch straight up the seam, if he can just pass lead it up into the inside and let it rip, I think he's going to step on that safety. We saw Drini do that against a similar defense in the challenge. Double, double, double. When he sends Moss right up this seam right here. It looks like he's going to try to go to the corner right there. First and 10. Vic, right up the seam. It's been Julio running up that right seam. He has been money so far for Blocky. He's just got to cash in. Uh, yes, he just needs to make sure he gets points right here. He's on the cusp of field goal range. Probably needs about another 10 or 11 yards to feel comfortable. 
for seven and ten for block. Twenty six seconds, one timeout remaining. This is a gun punch clinic. I know the whole nation tries to run this offense, but these are some gun punch specialists. This is what the offense looks like when it's being ran by some of the best. In the back cross the body, that's Kenny Galladay, the Detroit Lion, to the 31 yard line, and he gets out of bounds. That was what was smart. He didn't get too greedy, he didn't try to make the play, gets himself out of bounds, preserves that timeout, Boxen's on the move. Abbott Lopez from Miami, Florida. Again. Middle of the field. It's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, RG. Yeah, but now he's in a little bit of an awkward situation here. He may have time for one more play, but if he doesn't get in the end zone and that clock starts moving, he's going to have to hurry up to that line to get the field goal off. This how, is intense. How big is this drive? Blocky gets the ball to start the second half. Oh, it's huge. This is everything, Nick. 13 seconds, one, no timeout remaining for Blocky. Looks to the wheel. Oh, no, he's in He's inbound. That oh, animation no, may have killed him. I don't know if he's going to get this off. Four seconds. That clock's going to start right as the kicker comes There's out. Three, two, he Got gets the ball off. down. It's up a monumental field goal. It got interesting at the end, but Blocky broke the shutout streak and was able to put three on the board. 10-3. The score at the half. RG, I don't know how Blocky was feeling, but my heart rate was up trying to get that field goal out there. Oh my goodness, Blocky almost threw the points away. Almost made it a six-quarter slump. Thank goodness he was able to get that field goal off. Now he's on a one-possession ball game. Let's take a look at those first half highlights. Starting with Young Kibb. He drove right down the field, and he found Jerry Rice on that wheel route. Yeah, that's a nice play by Kibb. That's going to be a staple in these done bunch players' offense. That Bertle will play motioned out wheel, high pass. That was a big sack right there for the Kibber. Field goal up to make it a 10-0 game. Blocky put together a nice drive, but as he looks for the playmaker up the field, a little bit of an overthrow from Mike Vick, and it goes the other way. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he tried to high pass that, and, and that what, that's what caused it to go over the receiver. He was definitely open. Just an unfortunate but how about this? pass for Blocky. What a pick by Deion Sanders. One-handed. Didn't even get the camera flip to call it an interception. You know what's interesting to me about that play is before that, Kiv had just been throwing his guys wide open. It was like he, they say he was a robot. There was no 50-50 balls. It was it just getting his guys in space, making crispy reads. The one time he goes and throws that 50-50 ball, Blocky gets the interception. We've got one other game going on right now between two belt winners for more on that. Let's throw it over to Rico Williams. What's going on, Rico? We had a great first half with Ghost and Kratobin. Ghost had to dominate this first half. As you can see, he was all pumped up as he was able to get in that end zone and take that seven to three lead. And he was able to get this fumble right here, the strip fumble. He recovered it, kept that momentum going. Kratobin was a little deflated, but Ghost kept pouring it on, rolled out with Vic, paused himself, was able to find that receiver. And then he was able to punch it in right here to even increase that lead. But Kratobin in the third and 35, he found Randy Moss, and just like that, he got himself back in this game. Ghost was able to put in one more point, and the score is 28 to 10 at the half. So Ghost in control, even with that big play from Kratobin. Our defending Madden Challenge champion. How about 99 yards for Kratobin? And he's still down 18 points. That's what I mean. How about 28 points in the, the first half from Ghost? I mean, that, that's ridiculous. As we kick off the second half here for our game, Young Kim, Blocky. Blocky going to get the ball to start the second half. And RG, that just shows how important it was for him to get three points at the end of the first. Oh, absolutely. This ends up being a huge drive for Blocky. And if he could score here, that's going to really frustrate Kibb because Kibb's been playing some really good Madden football. And if you, when you're playing that good and your opponent's just still all the way in the game. Ball's oh, out! It's Ball's out. out! Oh, what a break for Blocky as it gets out of bounds. And that's what I was talking about yesterday, Nick. That spin move is a lot more risky now because if you get hit-sticked in the back, and you, when you spin into a defender, that ball is liable to come out. That's exactly what happened right there. Fortunate for Blocky, it rolled out of bounds. 
end on first and ten for Fournette. Boy, talk about a play we could look back on if this comes down to the wire. Blocky finds a way to win this one. That fumble just getting out of bounds. Look at that, a little Coach Blocky, some Coach Kip right there. <coughs> might, might have a little work to do on Kip's hair. Nonetheless, still pretty cool. Second and seven. Vic at the helm for both these teams. Blocky. Finally broke his shutout streak against Kim. Now can he put a touchdown on the board? Vic. Nice. Deep down the field. That's oh. Randy Moss. He has the first down inside the 50. Now, I'm curious. Who do you guys got? Not who do you got in the chat. Who are you rooting for? If you're a Miami guy and you're rooting for Blocky, give me a one. If you're a Seattle guy or a Kim fan and you're rooting for the Kipper, give me a two. I want to go back and see where the chat's head was at during this game. Who are you guys rooting for? One for Blocky, two for Kim. 10-3 the score. Blocky looking to tie it up this first drive of the second half. Vic, nice throw lead. underneath. Little spin move, and Julio Jones, he's going to pick up a nice chug of yards. And I love that throw from Blocky, not forcing it downfield into trouble. And what I like more than anything is right after he spun, he started to hold that RB button. And what the RB button does when you're a ball carrier is it covers the ball, and that's going to significantly decrease your chance at being able to fumble it. Obviously, Blocky fumbled on the kickoff, so now he's making sure he protects that ball with that RB cover ball mechanic. Good move by Blocky. How about for that? Boy, it was tough running early in this game, but it seems like Blocky has gotten a little more patient running the ball as the game has worn on. Yeah, just mixing it in. You got to keep Kiv honest. And remember, the guys that Kiv has on that D line and, you know, at linebacker, those are a bunch of softies. I mean, sometimes you just got to play ground and pound football and punch them in the mouth. And that's what Blocky's doing with Fournette. Don't, don't let him bluff you with these guys all in the box. They're all in the box, but those aren't goons. They're more henchmen than goons. Yeah, I don't even know if they're henchmen. They're like Power Ranger villains. Like, yeah. I mean, they're technically the enemy, but they're not that tough. Though. They're not that tough. Like, Kiv's got them looking pretty tough, though. Big third and two coming up for Blocky. Doesn't want to settle for three here. He wants to put seven on the board and put the pressure back on our defending Madden Bowl champion. Vic, gun bunch. Motion Jones tied to the formation. Watch that hitch on the right side. We've seen this stutter post. Oh no, he audibled out of it. Oh, the defense covered the hitch perfectly. There's nobody open. He's got to get out of the pocket. He's got nothing. Oh, nice. Oh, what a play. play. That playmaker might have been one of the best plays that maybe people at home don't know how to do that. That was a nice scramble. If you want to know how to playmaker, simply when you have the quarterback and the play starts breaking down, just flick the right stick in the direction that you want to send that closest receiver to you to and he'll adjust his route and go into that direction. There's also an ability that these guys can add on to their players for a 20 extra cap, and that's gonna make the players respond even quicker to the playmaker and more precise. Blocky actually has two of those playmakers on his team. So there's the default playmaker, Nick, where they'll respond to it, but it may be a little bit delayed. They might not go the exact angle. You flick the right stick or you could pay an extra 20 cap at a playmaker ability to your receiver, and anytime you playmaker that receiver, he's instantly gonna respond to the command, and he's gonna go exactly where you try to send him with the right stick. Second and four for Vic. Rolls out right side this time. And so far, Blocky, very effective utilizing the uh, mobility of Mike Vick. It's why guys use Vic and Lamar Jackson. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's a 50-50 split in this tournament. E every one of these competitors even either has Mike Vick or Lamar Jackson. Both these guys using Vick, and this is a big third and three for Blockson. Huge play. This is big. He's going to have to consider taking three if he doesn't get this. Could be four down territory, depending on what block he's thinking. He already went for a fourth and 24. You got to think fourth and three might be on the docket. Only Vick. because Kiff's offense is just so potent. Oh, back in the end zone. Oh, he has one-handed, but a great defensive play 
gonna pry that ball free, and it looks like Blocky is gonna settle for three. Oh, that's up for Blocky. I mean, that looks like a 50-50 ball, but then when you got your high overall wide receiver going up against that low rated defender. It's an 80-20 ball. Yeah, exactly. Boss. Kim very fortunate that he was able to knock that ball out. And sure, Blocky's finally been able to point put some points up on Kibbs, but they've only been field goals. Eventually, if you're blocking and you want to win this game, you're going to have to score touchdowns. Now it's going to be up to Blocky's defense to get a stop against a Kibb offense that has been absolutely surgical, robotic. Use whatever word you can. It, it, it's been one mistake, and it was a pick of the front side right by the pylon by Deion Sanders. Vic. Underneath, that's Randy Moss. Oh, what a move, a missed tackle. He's in open space. 40, spin move inside the 40. And it shows you how one missed tackle can turn into a big game. Young Kiv, a.k.a. the robot. I like it. Young robot. I like it. And he just makes reads. They, they, it's what all the competitors describe him as. They said he, he just hikes the ball. He instantly know, knows, knows who's open. He dissects the defense immediately. And it's why he's one of the best in the world. Kip really has a gift when it comes to playing offense on John Madden football. And just in case anyone was wondering, catching the ball right there, that's Jerry Rice. It's not Joe Rice. He's back in the players' lounge. <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Joe Rice. By the way, they need to get him one of those nice um, Madden ball, uh, what are those, those wind breakers? I want Joe Rice to get one of those. I mean, he, he was, what, what, a few MCS points away from playing in this tournament? Crazy. I feel like my guy is Pressure by Blocky. Of course, the throw away. Huge third and five. Andrew, if you're watching in the back, get, hook my boy Rice up. While you're at it, get me one of those hats. Those are for the players. I'm not playing. I'm not doing enough work wait, here to wait. get a hat. We got to I guess we're technically, oh, like, we're not in the Madden Bowl, but we're a part of the Madden Bowl. We're, we'll talk about it later. We're adjacent to the Madden Bowl. <laughs> we're adjacent to the Madden Bowl. Look at Kev, though. They're down to five. I mean, if you're blocky again, it, it, it's, it, it, we can sound like a broken record, but you just got to hold him to three. Oh! And Kiv knew right away he was going to take off with Michael Vick. The problem is he didn't slide. He dove, and when you dive like that, you actually do have a chance to fumble the ball, where if you slide, there's no chance of fumbling the ball. Kiv getting a couple breaks where he's been fortunate. That one interception didn't go his way, though. That, that was for sure. Oh, back to that scramble. That was just great recognition by Kib. Seeing the user clear out the middle of the field, and right away, he uses the speed from the former Atlanta Falcon legend, the Madden legend, Michael Vick, as the controllers are down. Fours up in the chat. We're headed to the fourth quarter, and it's a four-point game. 10-6, your defending champ. Young Kib with a lead here in the first game of Group C. Hey, if you're trying to improve in Madden 19, make sure you join host Farles and Gibbs for Madden Daily Drops every morning at 10.30 a.m. You can learn tips and tricks to improve your gameplay, find those key sleeper players for your ultimate team lineup. I mean, they do such an amazing job over there. You'll also earn exclusive rewards just for tuning in and linking your account. It's Madden Daily Drops every morning at 10.30 a.m. And RG, a big shout out to Farles and Gibbs. I know they're watching at home. They join the Madden Bowl. It, it's crazy. Falls and Gibbs, who are guys that started off in their parents' basement, you know, doing Twitch Madden shows, trying to teach people, bring them into our community. And now here they are working for EA, running the Madden Daily Drops, giving away things, giving back to the community, legends in the community. Let me see some MVPs in the chat. Woo! Support for our guys, Falls and Gibbs. How about blocky defense stopping Ricky Williams in his tracks and a third and five and blocky play. needing to stop it's a big play I love Madden because you hear me say there's a big play so many times because there's so many big plays it's only five minute quarters every possession counts each play is big as the next what's Kip gonna do here oh he's got the middle of the field Oh, he could have scrambled, but he didn't. He's still looking to pass. 
This is, is there is anyone open? He's running back. He's going to have to chuck. That's a mistake from Kim, but a great defense by Blocky behind the play. Exactly. I, I, I think I, I'm just going to credit Blocky on that one. His user defender was all over the place. He took away the hitch, took away the playmaker, took away the scramble. That was good use of defense by Blocky. Forced Kim to throw the ball away. And now we got ourselves a one touchdown ball game. Blocky getting the ball back to tie it up. This is what the batter ball is all about. If you guys at home want to see why these guys go from great Madden players to elite, it's that defensive user. That's, that's what's so impressive is all these guys know how to move the ball offensively. You may at home, they, they may feel really good about your offense, but that, that user on defense is, is what changes it from great Madden player to elite Madden player. Now Blocky hanging around, only down seven. But well, he's going to need to put a touchdown on the board, something he hasn't been able to do today. Vic in the shotgun. He's going to hand it off to Fournette. And there you go, Young Kid's defense oh. in the backfield. But Fournette is like a bowling ball. He works through three defenders and picks up a first down. And that's the type of stuff you're going to have to deal with if you're Young Kid. You spend less than 400 cap on the defensive side of the ball. You're going to have some trouble tackling him. First and ten for Blocky. Balls on the 40-yard line. We're under the four-minute mark to go. Make sure you guys are hitting that squads button, by the way, to keep track. Kurtobin and Ghost in the other pod. You watch them both live at once. Vic tries to step up. Breaks one sack. Sometimes breaking the sack is phenomenal. And sometimes that happens where the, and the second guy just has a free rush on him. Yeah, it's very rare that the broken sack actually helps you. Sometimes it does. It lets you can get a dot off, but it slows the quarterback down so much that usually the other defenders have time to get over there, wrap him up, put him down. Look at Blocky. I love how he keeps flipping his play here at the line of scrimmage. Trying to throw Kip off, make his adjustments a little bit more difficult. When you play defense like Young Kip and you make a lot of individual adjustments, uh, flipping the play could really mess with that because you're making adjustments for the offense beer on one side of the field, and then all of a sudden it's on the other side of the field, and you got to adjust to that. So that's very smart by Blocky to flip the play a couple times, kind of mess with Kip and his adjustments a little bit. You'll see a lot of these high-level players do that often. We're under the three-minute mark. Part in the fourth quarter. It's part of that chess match, Nick. Third and five. When me and you play Madden, we're playing checkers. When these guys play, they're playing chess. I don't know about you. I'm playing Candyland. <laughs> Whoa! Boy, that was a throwback. That looked almost like the Madden 18 truck stick, where it sort of throws off the defender. He just slowed down a little bit in the missed tackle because of a first down. The truck whip. The air truck. That's not a fan of it. Fournette, right up the gut. How about the rushing attack from Blocky? 10 carries, 67 yards, averaging almost seven a carry. Yeah, absolutely. I'm telling you, Kiv doesn't have the personnel to make tackles or get block sheds. The problem is, Blocky, he's a pass-first type of player. He doesn't want to have to run the ball. But Kiv's pretty much saying, if, if you're going to beat me, you got to do what you don't want to do. Blocky staying patient with it. And that, and that shows you, you know, these guys, you know, some people in chat may see similar offensive formations. They say they're playing the same stuff, but Blocky has made an adjustment seeing that the opening is in the run game. Yeah, you talk to the guys in the back, and, and they get a little frustrated because they get all the criticism. Oh, everybody runs gun punch. It's the same play. No, these guys all run a lot of gun punch, but they mix up their plays. They have different philosophies behind it. And, uh, and unless you play on the level that they play at, you're not going to really be able to pick up on it. But, but it's legit. These guys all have a lot of different philosophies out of this formation. Some of the stuff is the same, but a lot of them like to do different things. We've hit the two-minute warning. Blocky wants this to be the last drive of this game. He knows if he puts the ball back in Kim's hands with time to spare, Kim can drive down the field in a heartbeat. Little throw underneath. Julio Jones once again picking up three. See, me personally, I'm not trying to make this the last time of the game. I'm just trying to score. The reason being, Nick, because if for some reason something tragic happens and Kiv stops me, I still have all three of these timeouts that could give me some time to get the ball back. But you got to leave yourself this time on this clock for that to be relevant. So if I'm blocking, my main focus right here is just to get those points 
just in case something doesn't go with Plant. Uh, pressure off the corner, great recognition. That's Leonard Fournette. Oh, he had a blocker oh. up ahead and he slowed down and got tackled. That was a touchdown to B. Instead, it's just a first down and the first timeout taken by Young Gibb. Oh, I think Blocky, if he just got to the numbers right there, might have been able to get to the cribbo. Had the blocker up ahead, looked like he was going to seal off the corner. Instead, first and 10 from the 11. Pick up a first down just inside the one. And why not give it to your Mack truck, Fournette? Only pick up one, though. Kiv aggressively calling his second timeout. That coach Kiv calling a timeout, saying, you know what, if Blocky scores, I want the ball back with enough time to put a drive of my own out there. Kiv, line, line, line. Now second and nine. Fournette on the left hip of Michael Vick. He's going to throw for it. Looks right side, that was a high pass. It was uh, too high for anybody to set up a third and nine. Key moment, down seven. 10 yards away from tying this first game of Group C up. Expect him, he's gonna play coverage right here. Try to make clock blocky work for this touchdown. Yep, there it is, only a three-man rush. Nobody there, takes off with Vic. Oh! Gee, that's two mistakes running the ball. I think he had an opportunity to get in the end zone there as well. Now a fourth and four, game on the line. This is what it's all about, Nick. There's two great competitors, two of the best we have. Back and forth battle, and now Blocky, fourth and four. Trying to get himself a chance to extend this ball game. Oh, Let's see what he has dialed up. In this situation, they, they like to either go with the wheel route or some hitches. Some high ball hitches. And Blocky pull it off. Three man rush, steps up. Nothing's Pressure there. coming. Oh, oh he, he makes a man miss. Oh. Rolls back left Vickens. side. Waiting, looking. He was so pumped. I'm pumped. And just like that, with a minute to go, we have a tie ball game. And Kiv, all of a sudden, him using those timeouts looks very smart. Because he gives himself a minute to go down and get in the field goal range with no timeouts. Look at this one more time. Look how much he extends the play. Aga. Pressure avoids it. Agasa. Back Stop across it. the field. Let's, let's take a look at the gum can. Come on, man! One stop! There it goes. Woo! Give though a chance to win. Tie game, he's gonna take off with Vic. No timeout, oh, that's a but chunk. a big game diving forward to the 44 yard line. That's a big chunk right there. Oh, it's on. Clock's ticking. Oh, you're blocky, you, you, you need a D up. A sack would be huge for you. Quick hike by Kim. Hit. Pressure picked up. Look back across his body. Good hit. Prize the ball free. Stops the clock. What's the target number to get a field goal in with a low cap kicker? I, I, I feel Kim, he needs to get to about that 35 yard line for him to feel truly comfortable making this kick. Anything beyond that, he might attempt it, but he's going to be pushing it. Oh, he's looking at it. He's got a man. Oh, Jerry Rice with the catch at the 15, one on one. It's the Hall of Famer making a Hall of Fame play. Here's the thing. Blocky still with all three of these timeouts up here. He's going to be able to try to ice Kiv. Kiv's going to have to kick a pressure kick. And we saw a pressure kick. Uh, that icing mechanic messed up Strafen yesterday. Yeah, Strafen had a kick to win the game. Spoto iced him. The ice was a little too much for Strafen. Let's see if Kiv don't care about ice. I think Strafen just unfriended me on Facebook for bringing it back up. There it is. Can he make the pressure kick? Ball is down, kick it up. It is true, it is good. It is our defending Madden 18 champion with a three-point lead with
with three ticks on the clock. A guy like Kim don't care about ice, Nick. Shout out to my guy, Ice. Squibs it up the middle. Two, one. No time left. And young Kim, what a classic. It's only hour one here at the Madden.